as close as I've ever come to a wheelie. My word! Hey up, welcome back to Apple Yards in Keithley and today I'm going to be taking out the Suzuki GSX-S1000. First time on an inline four here at Apple Yards for me. So we'll do that shortly. In the meantime, and if you're in this neck of the woods, get yourself down to this fantastic dealership here. Got to be one of the most friendly, helpful and knowledgeable dealerships around. Plenty of stock, plenty of demonstrators for you to ride, and a coffee machine to wet your whistle. So, without further ado, let's crack on and take out the Suzuki GSX S1000. Right then, there she is, the Suzuki GSX S1000. A very, very purposeful looking beast. And am I the only one that thinks it looks like a rhinoceros from the front? Uh, but anyway, before we go out, I'd just like to show you some of the demonstrators that you can come down to Wapley Yards and uh, ride. Um, from the Royal Enfield range. And uh, I've, uh, I've tested uh, most of these. Um, and those I haven't tested uh, is because uh, I own the bike myself. So... Uh, there's the uh, new uh, Super Meteor 650 in that fabulous blue colour. You can come down and test ride that. There's the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. And you can come down and test ride that. And there the uh, Royal Enfield Interceptor. And of course I have an Interceptor. That one there in the Baker Express colour. Again another demonstrator. You can come and ride down here. Hiya. And of course the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 And uh, there's even some Oxford heated grips on that one And um, that's the one I test rode a few weeks back If you want to go take a look at that And the Royal Enfield Classic 350 In the all blacked out version there And uh, something I've not ridden The Royal Alloy Scooter not a massive scooter fan, but actually, that looks quite uh, stylish. Anyway, so come down and uh, have a ride of uh, one of the demonstrators from the Royal Enfield range here at Apple Yards. Right. So, the last bike I rode that was anything like this was my... 2019 Kawasaki Z1000SX uh, now called the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 but this is its not quite its Suzuki equivalent I mean the Suzuki equivalent of that bike would be the GSX S1000 GT this is not the GT this is the standard so it's what you would call a super naked, I think. Super naked, hyper naked. I think hyper naked's a sort of uh, like the Kawasaki H2 and, and, and mental things like that. So anyway, let's see what we get. When we turn the old key, and it is a key, not keyless, I am very pleased to report. Okay, nice start up there on the TFT. Nice 5 inch TFT there, very clear. Let's fire her up, we're in neutral. And the familiar thrum of an inline 4 engine, and what I'm expecting for this is a slightly different mapping to the bikes that I've previously ridden from here. Uh, inline 4s tend to deliver their power most noticeably in the higher rev range and uh, that traditional um, trade-off between uh, torque and uh, and high revving performance so 
without further ado let's crack on we've got everything we need to know about there a gear indicator the traction control setting the throttle setting that's the SDMS here up the left that's the throttle setting that's on A that's the traction control setting is on 3 uh, and then on the right hand side we have our speedometer display odometer display uh, fuel range and the trip meter and average consumption meter and we have uh, around the outside there the uh, rev counter so let's crack on it's decided to rain on us might have to give you a wipe at some point here we go Now yes, our, the obvious competitors to this bike are going to be, uh, as I've just mentioned, the Kawasaki Ninja 1000, I would guess the uh, Honda uh, CB1000 in its various iterations and the uh, Yamaha MT10. Uh, and I must say, in terms of st uh, specs and performance and sort of overall categorization, there's not an awful lot between um, the uh, four offerings from the uh, from the main Japanese manufacturers. So uh, I wonder if it will ultimately come down to something like brand loyalty, uh, or uh, or indeed the aesthetic appeal of the bike. I mean, in even in fifth gear, just the slightest blip of the throttle, and we're away. Yeah, so this is essentially a sports bike with straight bars. It's a fairly well established uh, category of motorcycle these days. The, uh, the super naked, or I call it a muscle bike if you prefer. But uh, it's all in the name, isn't it? There is no wind or body protection to speak of no screen no wraparound fairing uh, just the uh, overall bulk of the front of the bike to afford you a degree of protection from the elements so here we are now in a little place called Harden and this will take us down into Bingley over the river air where sits a nice little pub called the Brown Cow which the last time I was there some great Timmy Taylor's beer good food and they have from time to time live music on of an evening if you like a bit of jazz I'm not naturally drawn to uh, inline four-cylinder engines because they don't normally have character uh, all of which said of course if you put a nice end can on uh, and get a bit of uh, basso profundo going on from the back end if that's not too much information uh, then uh, you may be uh, may well be able to uh, uh, reinvest um, some element of uh, enhanced character in, into the bike but they do tend to be a little bit bland and clinical uh, albeit blisteringly powerful uh, do inline for engines and some people absolutely love them to death uh, for that very reason for, for their uh, smoothness over sort of sewing machine like qualities uh, and that's fine I just prefer um, sorry still getting used to that clutch it, it's it's snatchy uh, I don't think it's the clutch that's inherently snatchy I think it's me that's just not used to riding something quite as pent up <laughs> as this thoroughbred <laughs> all he wants to do is go I can hear the bike giving me a right hard time now she's saying who put this pussy on me get riding <laughs> but here we are in a bit of traffic and uh, yeah you can soon get used to the clutch biting points fairly early on in the travel fueling's absolutely fine we've got no hunting or stuttering or 
general reluctance to uh, to deliver smooth power at these low speeds. So then, uh, who is this bike actually aimed at? But well, I would suggest it could be sort of two or three uh, different kinds of folk, really. I mean, first off. If you've been used to riding powerful sports bikes for a few years, but for whatever reason you need to transition away from that canted forward riding position, then uh, these sorts of bikes are the uh, logical next uh, progressive step. Because you're retaining all the power, but you're uh, bringing into the equation a more comfortable riding position. Uh, and it is a comfortable riding position. I mean, my legs are at quite an acute angle. Uh, definitely uh, 45 degree to the there. And uh, the uh, the handlebars are sort of somewhere between what you'd expect on uh, on an adventure bike uh, or a, a long distance tourer and uh, something a little bit more sporty but not extremely so and uh, all day comfortable so uh, touring would be very practical on a bike like this um, but I suspect um, that uh, if you were uh, wanting to do that in any uh, in any significant way you'd need to go for the GT version of this bike uh, with the uh, with the luggage kit uh, that comes as standard I'm not aware that there are luggage options uh, for this bike, so you'll be looking at throw over panniers or uh, a rucksack like I'm wearing at the moment. But certainly from uh, a point of view of the riding position, certainly be uh, all day comfortable for long distance touring. And the uh, tank range when we do the walk around. So yeah, I suspect it's either uh, either aimed at um, somebody who is looking to transition from a sports bike to something more comfortable, yet retain all the power and the uh, thrills that come with it, um, and could also quite rightly appeal to people who need a bike for day-to-day -day commuting uh, but also want something that's uh, capable of giving uh, thrills, but hopefully not spills, uh, over the weekend. Do a bit of scratching around the switchbacks. Because this bike would be ideally suited to that. I'm just going to just try <laughs> trying to see if you if you're getting uh, getting a bit wet on the lens there. Well, this. Nothing like this was forecast for uh, for this morning. So I can only apologise for the suboptimal weather. But I've just found of late that they are, I shouldn't be droning on about it, but I'm going to do because it absolutely infuriates me. The, the accuracy of the weather forecast lately has been totally out the window just plain wrong not even on the same day you know perhaps you could for, forgive some of these long-range forecasts for not panning out but when you get up first thing in the morning and it says less than five percent chance of rain and then an hour later and it's chucking it down you've got to be wondering how these people earn a living haven't you but we'll make the best of it Now I suppose the thing about bringing bikes out for a test ride in the chucking down rain is that um, it's a real world assessment isn't it? Of course I think most of us wouldn't choose to go out riding in the rain would we? But um, sometimes uh, it, it's unavoidable particularly if you're out on tour you know you're going to be lucky to find three or four days three or four consecutive days where you can guarantee that it ain't going to rain so uh, you really do need to know how a bike will perform in the weather 
I can say no protection on this bike but I'm not getting any uh, unduly turbulent air around my chops and uh, even uh, on this wet and uneven road surface the tyres feel well planted and the suspension coping uh, admirably with our uh, sub-optimal roads right okay while there's nothing behind let's try the brakes front yeah plenty of bite quite prog <coughs> quite progressive and rear that's pretty good too for a rear brake brake <coughs> excuse me brake has to be said right so let's just get a little bit uh, responsibly spirited up here and see uh, how she gets on oh my lord the power is absolutely endless worst road on the planet by far this York gate I've said it many times worst road on the planet for its undulating road surface and uh, the suspension on this uh, Suzuki GSSX SSSX 6000 is coping with it magnificently which is more than can be said for my ability to pronounce GSSSX 6000 <coughs> And if I've got to criticise Suzuki for anything at all, it's coming out with a model name that's utterly impronounceable. Anyway, never mind any of that old twaddle. Let's do it walk around. Right, so there she is then, the Suzuki GSXS 1000. And it stopped raining for the time being, so uh, let's do the walk around while we can. I apologise for the quality of the footage coming up. So let's just take a look around the bike. So starting with the engine then, we have a four cylinder liquid cooled 998cc unit there, which puts out 150 brake horsepower at uh, an eye watering 11,000 RPM. And in terms of torque, puts out 108 newton meters of torque. That's 79.6 pound feet at 9,500 rpm. And a very impressive engine indeed, that one. And looking at the front of the bike there, you can see that uh, contrast there between the uh, the blue anodized wheels and the gold anodized forks and that's a 17 inch front wheel and the forks are KYB 43 millimeter upside down forks fully adjustable and uh, the brakes comprise of two 320 millimeter Brembo discs with two Brembo four piston calipers and the travel the uh, travel rather on that suspension at the front is 120 millimeters and tubeless dunlop tires at the front there going to the rear of the bike then again a 17 inch wheel the suspension there is a single shock absorber which is adjustable for preload and gives 130 millimetres of travel. Looking at the brakes, at the rear we have a single 240 millimetre disc, a single pot Nissin caliper, and again that uh, very fetching blue anodised finish to the rear wheel. 
and as you can see there uh, chain drive as you would expect on a bike in this category coming up to the fuel tank the fuel tank is 19 liters which is five us gallons and you should expect a range there of around 175 miles depending on your style of riding of course so if we talk about sort of the overall dimensions of the bike the uh, the wheelbase on this bike is uh, 1.46 meters and the seat height is 810 millimeters and the wet weight of the bike comes in at 214 kilograms that's 472 pounds and uh, with all that in mind uh, let's take a look at me upon the bike right okay then so i am six foot one inches tall i've got a 32 going on 33 inch inside leg approximate weight about 85 kilos and uh, as you can see at stride the bike here i'm flat footed while still retaining angle at the knee so uh, this bike isn't going to present any problems to uh, anybody sort of uh, five foot six seven eight um, height be perfectly manageable uh, and uh, again the the weight at, uh, at 214 kilograms is is not really going to cause uh, any issues i wouldn't suggest um, as you can see the riding position itself leg wise is pretty sporty with the uh, the pegs slightly rearward there the handlebars as you can see providing a reasonably upright riding position um, this bike in this rather uh, fetching looking electric blue colour I'm not so sure what its proper title is but the combination of blue on the body and wheels and the gold of the uh, of the forks there always uh, an, an attractive contrast when it uh, when it comes to uh, to colourways on uh, on bikes so let's uh, talk about the brake and clutch levers the brake lever is adjustable for span and the clutch lever isn't for whatever reason but uh, easy reach on both no issues there at all and the tft dash of course um, i went through uh, as we were setting off so yeah all in all a fiery little package this i mean the performance is absolutely blistering but you would indeed expect that from a 150 brake horsepower bike on a bike of this size and stature and uh could certainly get it get you into trouble <laughs> uh yeah so i'm sorry about the um the, the view from the camera coming up here because of that rain um, but I hope it didn't uh, get in the way too much. Beautiful handling at slow speed once you get used to this clutch, you know. Now, if that isn't the sound of an inline four performance motorcycle, I don't know what is. <laughs> Close as I've ever come to a wheelie. My word. Okay, so that's it for me today. Thanks again to Apple Yards for the loan of this motorcycle, the Suzuki GSXS 1000. Super naked. And if you'd like to uh, test ride this bike, then. Uh, nip down to Apple Yards and uh, speak to Lewis or Kieran there or uh, any other member of staff 
and uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to arrange for you to take out this uh, <laughs> feisty machine get yourselves down there ok thanks ever so much for watching uh, please click a like please click a subscribe and until the next time ride safe be kind and I'll see you soon Toodle Pip <laughs>